So after a while, even though Alfred Wegener didn't have a mechanism by which the the continents separated, um, there be, there came more evidence that uh, that the continents were actually dividing. And, and the first piece of evidence was was the sea floor spreading. The mid ocean ridges that showed that the plates of the Earth actually moved away from each other, causing this mid ocean ridge. So the continental drift theory that didn't have a mechanism was refined into what we call today plate tectonics. And plate tectonics is the acceptable theory of of how the the face of the earth changes over time due to the uh, the shifting plates. So basically what happens is the um, nuclear fission which is big atoms breaking into smaller atoms they release heat in the earth's core and and that provides the heat uh, that serves as the mechanism for the for the entire earth. Uh, now nuclear fission is not the only source of heat. The, the way the earth formed originally it, it was very hot initially and that heat is still around as well but the nuclear fission keeps that heat going um, as, the, as the earth progresses and then the heat transfers into the mantle well the mantle has magma that, that raises up and causes what's called a convection current that hot material from the outer core rises up and cooler material takes its place and then you get these circulations of hot material coming to the top of the surface of the earth and then the cooler material coming back down now, this is a very very slow process but it, it does occur with, with the, uh, the convection currents inside the mantle now the lower part of the mantle, uh, as it rotates, the upper part of the mantle and the crust, which is called the lithosphere, it's separated into plates, and then these plates started start moving either toward away or or side to side past each other, um, and, and we'll look more into that as we look at the the types of boundaries. But because of these these convection currents, then the plates that are riding on top of them will move with the convection current, and if two plates are moving toward each other uh, or away from each other or sliding past each other, then then we start getting uh, volcanoes and earthquakes in the process. So the first type of boundary is a divergent boundary. And basically what happens here is you get oceanic crust and oceanic crust that separate away from each other. So you get a convection current over here that goes clockwise and another convection current over here that goes counterclockwise. And in that process of coming over, the convection current will push the plate to the left on, on this side and then to the right on this side which will separate the two in the middle. Now this type of boundary only occurs between oceanic crust because the new material that comes up in the middle is pretty thin and it, that, that thin material creates new land in between and it, it forms that mid-ocean ridge uh, based on the because of the mantle uh, put, putting new magma in between. And if you look at this, you, you can see that the, the convection currents on this side, um, which, which cause a, a circulation of, of material as it goes around, the lithosphere gets pushed along, along with this convection current. And then over here, we get another convection current, which causes the lithosphere on this side to get pushed along, which leaves a gap in the middle that gets filled in by magma from the, from the, um, the, the mantle of the Earth, uh, filling in new land. As we've already seen, the Earth's magnetic field acts as a shield, protecting our planet from much of the sun's dangerous radiation. But in 1906, a French geologist named Bernard Bruns made a startling discovery about the field. Bruns was examining newly formed volcanic rocks near a lava flow in central France. Lava from a volcano contains minerals from deep inside the Earth. Inside the molten lava, iron particles are free to move. But as the flow begins to cool and form into rocks, the iron particles align themselves according to the Earth's magnetic field, like a compass. They become a fossilized snapshot of the Earth's magnetic field in action. But during his research, Bruns found some of the rocks contained iron particles that were magnetized in the opposite direction. Their compass needle had flipped pointing south instead of north. This was the moment of discovery. Bruns realized that at some point in the past, the Earth's magnetic field had changed direction and reversed itself. It was a significant discovery. It meant that Earth was a far more dynamic planet than many had imagined, constantly changing. We can see that the Earth's magnetic field has reversed about 60 times in the last 20 million years. That's once every couple hundred thousand years or so. And we may be going through a reversal right now because the Earth's magnetic field has decreased in strength about 10% in only the last century and a half. Now, no one's exactly sure why this happens, 
But Brun's discovery does raise a provocative question. What happens when the Earth's magnetic field goes to zero? The answer may lie on Mars. Scientists have detected that the red planet once may have had a magnetic field powered by a furnace-like core, just like the one on Earth. But at some point in its past, the heat source of the Mars core was extinguished. Without its internal furnace, the planet died. Its magnetic field disappeared, and harmful cosmic and solar rays bombarded the planet, wiping out any chance for life as we know it. Could that happen here? Well, the composition and size of the Earth's core is such that the Earth will probably stay hot inside for billions of years. But what happens when the Earth's magnetic field reverses and goes through zero? Well, if it happens in the next thousand years or so, there'll probably be humans around, scientists, and they can measure cosmic rays and study their effects on living things. Now, what's interesting about this is you can you can actually see a, a little bit of, of um, a magnetic field in the in the crust of the Earth. So what happens is as the magma inside the Earth is liquid, uh, that liquid magma uh, is um, it has iron and other magnetic properties uh, about it. And since it's liquid, then those those magnetic properties can align whatever direction they want to, and they align with Earth's magnetic field. And the interesting thing is if you move away from from the mid-ocean ridge, what you see is you see the magnetic um, iron filing, or the, the the iron that's inside that magnetic uh, the magnetic properties aligns with Earth's magnetic field one direction, and then it'll flip direction as you move away from the ridge. And as you move away, the, it'll flip again back the other direction, and as you move away more, then it flips back the other direction. And basically, what happens is as the seafloor has spread from that central location, then the magnetic field of the iron inside of this layer of the Earth has aligned with Earth's magnetic field, and because it's switches back and forth then we know the Earth's magnetic field has switched back and forth. Now we're not really sure why it switches back and forth, we just know it does based on this evidence on seafloor sea spreading. The next type of boundary is a convergent boundary. Now a convergent boundary is where you get plates that move toward each other. Now regardless of what type of plates there are, uh, you always get one plate, the, the more dense plate gets pushed underneath of the other plate. This process is called subduction. When one plate gets pushed under, uh, it gets destroyed and recycled back into the earth. Now you can have uh, oceanic crust along with continental crust, and a great example of this is over on the west coast of North, of North America. You get the um, you get the Rocky Mountains here that are being caused by uh, the Pacific plate going underneath the North American plate and pushing up. Uh, and you get you get a few volcanoes also, like Mount St. Helens is in that mountain range because of that um, that subduction going down of the of the oceanic plate and pushing up on the continental plate. You also get the uh, oceanic crust and oceanic crust that push against each other. In this process, you get some deep trenches. The Mariana Trench is a great example of how oceanic crust and oceanic crust will push together to create a, a deep wrench, uh, trench. And you also get uh, some, some areas here where you get volcanic activity because of that friction and that heat that's produced by basically rock pressing against each other. And, by, and, and, and with the, the rubbing against each other, they, they produce a lot of a lot of heat and you get that uh, magma that pushes its way to the surface and, uh, and and you get volcanoes in that manner. Um, and then here you get uh, continental crust and continental crust that come together. A great example of this is like the Himalayan mountains. You get the uh, Indian plate that's rushing and pushing into the, the Asian, the Eurasian plate, and then it creates some of the tallest mountains on the earth with the Himalayan mountains. The last plate boundary we have is going to be the transform fault boundary. So you get plates that move away from each other, plates that move toward each other, and then in the process you also get plates that slide past each other. Um, now what this happens here is is these two plates don't have smooth surfaces. Now this picture looks like it has a smooth surface, but it really doesn't. It's got rocks that are sticking out into the other plate, and as they're trying to push and slide past each other, those rocks kind of lock in place until there's enough pressure to actually move those rocks, and in that process you get a a lot of vibrations, you get a lot of earthquake that form um, here at a uh, at a fault line because of the because of the sliding past each other and, and that sudden jerk between the two plates as they slide past will cause a lot of vibrations and, and a lot of earthquakes. So there are two leading theories on how convection occurs in the mantle. 
The first theory is referred to as the layered convection. Essentially, you get the top layer of the, the mantle here, which is what's referred to as the asthenosphere. Um, that that has its own convection current and then causes the lithosphere to um, to move along with that uh, that convection current and then the lower mantle has its own convection current and those convection currents cause uh, release heat into the asthenosphere which has its own convection currents as well um, the second type the second type of uh, convection is called the whole mantle convection. And basically what this is, is you get one big convection current inside of the mantle rather than, um, rather than two layers of it. Now the interesting thing about this is you can see that this looks a lot more complicated as far as the convection current. So um, the whole mantle convection current, while, while it seems uh, like it's a little bit simpler because it's one convection current as opposed to uh, opposed to two layers, it actually makes for very complicated uh, circular motion in, in this um, convection currents inside the Earth.